In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Oh, it was the most electrifying moment for those folks in that Mar-a-Lago room that were, I don't know, maybe they weren't paid to be there. But they were there watching Donald Trump announce his next, next, next run for President of the United States. Uh, this comes, of course, on the heels of those midterm elections that uh, didn't look so well for him. In fact, his entire party, many, are beginning to turn on him publicly because they don't see a way forward where they can win with him. That is always the situation. But of course, like anyone else with a, a strong presidential announcement, throughout this thing, he had to point out things like, it wasn't my fault what happened in the midterms. It's a good way to start your next presidential run. Let's let him say that. Much criticism is being placed on the fact that the Republican Party should have done better. And frankly, much of this blame is correct. But the citizens of our country have not yet realized the full extent and gravity of the pain our nation is going through. And the total effect of the suffering is just starting to take hold. They don't quite feel it yet, but they will very soon. I have no doubt that by 2024, it will sadly be much worse and they will see much more clearly what happened and what is happening to our country. And the voting will be much different, 2024. I do want to point out that in the midterms, my endorsement success rate was 232 wins and only 22 losses. You don't hear that from the media, but you don't hear that from the media. But I think you will, because people are starting to see what happened. That's some score. And in the primaries, it was 98.6%. But they were still trying to blame me. Effing electrifying. Can't wait to vote <laughs> for that guy. It wasn't my fault. If you guys didn't hear about from that fake news media, what my record really was during the midterms. Uh, also, by the way, apparently, uh, Jeff, um, the American people don't know how bad it is. They have no idea how bad things are, but soon they will realize. That's what else he said too. There's this continually uh, uh, auto accidents of logic between these folks. I thought the American people were fed up. I thought the American people were tired of inflation, no food in their fridge, high gas prices and all the rest. Now the American people have no idea what's happening, but soon they'll finally realize. It's gonna wait until 2024 until they realize. There was some response, but I wanna get your first thoughts on this announcement. Well, if I can take a dig at Michigan right quick. When they beat Ohio State football last year, Coach Jim Harbaugh was being courted by NFL teams. And us Buckeyes were like, no, 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 no. Much of our success has come with you at helm. <laughs> you need to stay. And I can imagine that's how the Democrats feel about Donald Trump right now. Like, are you gonna run for 2024? Great, because we had a lot of success with you in office and we would like to continue that success. But alluding to what you just said, yeah, people don't really know JR unless he tells them. So yeah, there's inflation, there's a lot of things going on. But if he doesn't say it, how are, uh, is it Magaga now? Make America great and glorious? How is Magaga going to know unless he says it to them? <laughs> Magaga's kind of gagging right now. Cuz the speech, <laughs> as I point out, as we start off, I sat through the whole thing. Of course, I was in and out, I had headphones on and I'm moving through the house. At times when I just couldn't sit there any longer, it went for over an hour and it just droned on and on and got slower and slower. And I feel like the energy in the room is completely gone. If anybody knows, make your announcement, get the hell off the stage. I was saying it so many times, but he is really actually running. So really fast, Trump's paperwork, by the way, establishing his candidacy landed with the Federal Election Committee shortly before he delivered his announcement at Mar-a-Lago. Um, so apparently I owe Jenk $100, wait. <laughs> He's gonna have to run first, cuz there's more. Let's look at some of the response from his fellow Republicans. Starting with former acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney and Kurt always asked his while he was there until now. He said this during Trump's boring ass speech, watch. Do you think this is good for the Republican party? No, I don't, because I think he's the only Republican who could lose. Um, if, he run, if he wins in 2024, now he's a candidate. He is the likely Republican nominee. Can he be beaten head to head by Ron DeSantis or Tim Scott? 
Sure, but it's not going to be a head to head race. There'll be five or six other people in the race, and he'll get the 35% that really support him. And under the winner take all primary system, he'll be the nominee. Um, but that means the 2024 race is not about Joe Biden or whatever Democrat is on the, on the ticket, not about inflation, not about world events, not about abortion. It'll be about Donald Trump, the same thing we saw in 2020. No one voted for Joe Biden. Everybody voted for or against Donald Trump. It was a referendum on him. Vanny, just another Republican realizing that Donald Trump is only about Donald Trump. Chris Sununu, governor of New Hampshire, also had something else to say. This was before he even spoke. He was ready. Watch. Look, he's going to make an announcement tonight. No one's going to be surprised. There'll be no new news. Won't clear the field. Um, he's really making an announcement at one of his weakest political points, right? I mean, he, we just got crushed in this election. Uh, he's. You could make the argument he's never been weaker politically. It's really a, an announcement from a defensive position. Uh, and therefore, I think it's going to make a, a little bit of news and we're all going to move on. We're all going to move on. It's going to make a little bit of news. And he also said he won't clear the field. Mick Mulvaney says he could clear the field. Chris Nunu says he couldn't. Chris Nunu potentially a 2024 uh, primary candidate for the Republican Party. So just keep that in mind as well. But you know what? This was one of my favorite parts of the pushback from conservatives. The conservative publication National Review, they wrote a whole thing from the editors. That's who the author was of this piece. First off, this is their headline from the National Review as this was happening. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they said though. To paraphrase Voltaire after he attended an orgy, this is from the National Review. To paraphrase Voltaire after he attended an orgy, once was an experiment, twice would be perverse. A bruised Donald Trump announced a new presidential bid on Tuesday, an invitation to double down on the outrages and failures of the last several years that Republicans should reject without hesitation or doubt. That said, first off, they talked about how his, uh, his accomplishments in taking down, um, I don't know, his accomplishments during presidency. I guess they didn't mention COVID, but still. Uh, after that, they said, that said, the Trump administration was chaotic even on its best days because of his erratic nature and lack of seriousness. He often acted as if he were a commenter on his own presidency and issued orders on Twitter and in other off the cuff statements that were ignored. He repeatedly had to be talked out of disastrous ideas by his advisors and Republican elected officials. He turned on cabinet officials and aides on a dime. Trump had a limited understanding of our constitutional system. And at the end of the day, little respect for it. Does this sound like somebody you want to vote for? I think they're still on board though. Let's go for more. Since then, Trump has maintained his grip on the party and done all he can to force uh, to force it to accept his delusions and lies about the 2020 election, boosting conspiracy theories and uh, fanatics and targeting for defeat with considerable success. Anyone pushing back too hard against him or his obsessions, more. Trump's success in imposing his fixations and candidate choices on the GOP played a large role in the GOP debacle in the midterms. His political backdrop raises the possibility that his low energy announcement speech may be a damp squib. And certainly GOP voters should give up the idea that Trump is a winner. I don't know, bro. I don't know, but it doesn't look like they're very happy with this announcement. They knew it was coming. This piece was probably written a day or two beforehand because they knew what he was probably going to say, which was a lot of the same stuff. I don't know if he has the backing of the rest of the party, Jeff. Well, as you mentioned earlier, um, a lot of Trump's successes came before COVID. And if you include COVID in a lot of what we're discussing, then yes, this entire thing was a debacle. But as you may remember, when they asked if he was going to hold himself responsible or take accountability for it, of course, he said, no, he's not going to do that. <laughs> he's not accountable for COVID. He's not accountable for the midterm losses. He's not accountable for losing the House and the Senate a few years ago. What is he accountable for? And let's go back to what Mick said earlier. Um, it was kind of a trick answer because yeah, Trump doesn't care about what's good for the Republican Party. He cares about what's good for him and they know who he is and who he was at that time. So all these people jumping ship and jumping off the Trump train is kind of bothering me because again, they knew who he was and they know what he's going to be about moving forward. But they're only getting off the train because they think he's gonna lose power. Therefore, they're going to lose power despite any shortcomings he may have as a man or as a candidate or as a politician. They know what's coming. So 
He's going to rip this thing apart before he goes down himself. Like he's not going to, he's going to take people with him as yeah. he goes down. Uh, well, it's it's a 100% type of situation. So I think that some are still treading lightly and won't say his name. Like we need a leader that isn't erratic. <laughs> you know, they can't say his name in anything derogatory because he just might rip their uh, head off.